When I imagined my life at 30, I thought I would have my white picket fence. I'd have kids. But my life is nothing like that. We're starting this off with Ashley, the first episode of the season. I can't do anything on my own. So my husband and I have to live with my parents and my sisters. I'm ashamed of living with my parents at this age. Ashley has put on some weight in recent years, forcing her and her husband, Daniel, to move back in with Ashley's parents. Each year, I kept gaining more weight. We had to stop doing what we normally do because I wasn't able to do it anymore. Unfortunately, my weight has now made him my caretaker. After taking a shower, Daniel brings Ashley some lunch, take out from a fast food restaurant. So I don't know if you want it on your range of fries. So I got both. Here's your soda. I want to make her comfortable and happy. What makes Ashley happy is when she's enjoying food. It's your usual fare, burgers and such, but Daniel brings her an order of fries and an order of onion rings to go with a giant soda. My family doesn't just eat, we feast. Food has always been a comfort for all of us. I always make a ton of food. Once Ashley gets back from work, it's time for dinner, and she warns us that it's going to be a lot of food before we even get to see the meal. Eating just soothes me. It always has. And especially when I'm really stressed out and I'm emotional, I just want to eat. Sure enough, we finally see the meal, and well, we see she isn't joking. The food is healthy enough as Ashley's plate is features chicken, rice, and broccoli, but it's how much she eats that earns her a spot on this list. I never talk to Ashley about her weight because it's a sensitive subject, but I am sad for her. I feel like one day Ashley won't wake up, and I couldn't even say bye to her. Her sister Alexis openly expresses her concern for Ashley's overindulgence at meals. When I wake up, I wake up miserable. The first thing I feel is pain from being overweight. Good golly dolly. How does a 700 pound 25 year old start her day, you might ask? We put cornstarch in my folds. <laughs> First, she starts with a healthy heaping of cornstarch. Not to eat though, but to put under her fat folds to stop them from chafing. Food is more than just a pleasure. It's my reason for existing. I can't wait for the first bite of something that will make me forget about all the misery of my life. Don't be afraid with the cheese. No, never. She puts multiple giant handfuls of cheese into a frying pan with over a dozen eggs. Oh, how we love a low-fat, low-cholesterol power plate in the morning. So my mom raised me and she did as good as she could. I was left alone a lot and that's how it started. My relationship with food it was just there, so I ate it. Can you give me a little bit more eggs, please? Yeah. Is that good or more? No, that's good. Okay. The two besties sit and overindulge in their meal, and Dolly barks orders at Cheyenne anytime she wants more food. Gosh, she's too lazy to even get up and get it herself. Since my last appointment with Dr. Now two weeks ago, it's just been really hard being at the house with my mom. How many pieces of ham would y'all like? She's stressing me out every day over how much I'm eating. So I've been trying to stick with the diet and exercise, but no matter how hard I work, I just feel like my mom is never satisfied with me. After visiting with the doctor, she still can't stop binge eating. Just look for yourself. She puts multiple slices of fatty, salty ham onto a grill and slathers some cheese onto frozen vegetables. Okay, more vegetables. In fact, recently it's gotten so bad that I have to do something just to get away from the house sometimes. Like I'll make up a lie about going somewhere just to get out. She can't even sit and eat at the table because she's so big. Instead, she takes her giant plate of food to the couch and just goes to town. After Andrew was born, Angel went into a postpartum depression. Angel just stopped getting out of bed. She just stopped living. Next on the list is Angel, a 42-year-old woman from Texas that lives with her boyfriend, Donnie. Angel doesn't realize how much she eats a day. I don't know exactly what the calories are, but it's a lot. If I could put it in pounds, I would say, 10, 12 pounds a day. Angel's pretty much bedridden, which means that Donnie makes her meals and he doesn't believe Angel's aware of just how much she eats. We could see that in action because just look at how much she eats for breakfast. Donnie makes a lot of sausage biscuits and Angel goes through all of them like it's nothing. 
June is so big that she can't even find the energy to collect her own food, so she gets her partner to do it for her. June gives her partner a shopping list of sorts, and at the start of this episode, June is craving Taco Bell. Thanks to the shopping list provided by June, we know exactly what her order is. June orders a nacho grande, two stuffed burritos, two gorditas with extra beef, a chalupa, and finally, two tacos. June even gets really mad because something she wanted wasn't in the bag. She gets so irritated that she even calls up Taco Bell to complain. I get fast food anywhere from one to two times a day, sometimes three. I'm conflicted by buying this food. I give in because I don't want to fuss. Can I have a uh, nacho grande, two stuffed burritos, gorditas with extra beef, a chalupa, and two hard shell tacos? Uh, did you look at the paper? Yes, I did. You couldn't have. You couldn't. I had an order and came through drive through and you guys didn't put an item in the bag at all. She acts like an addict and her fix is food. Sometimes when I see Joyce eating large amounts of food, I'm livid. I'm just livid. I just feel that she's going to die and then... <laughs> There's nothing I can do about it. Wait, both of those plates over for her? I was gonna comment on the size of the lasagna plate, but downing both of them in one sitting? Yeah, that's just too much. Try not to wear myself out so much I can't get out this shower. It does take a lot out of me at that point. All I wanna do is eat. Tommy's breakfast sounds normal enough on paper until you see it all laid out. So that's when my cravings for my first meal start to get overwhelming for me. Okay, it's just pancakes and they seem to be small enough. Simple, right? And Amanda is the one that cooks and brings it to me to make sure I'm happy. And she always makes something good. Very, very good. My favorite is when she makes me a bunch of bologna sandwiches. It's hard to stop. Well, that's a bit more than just pancakes. We've got all those pancakes on one plate, but we've also got two bologna sandwiches and scrambled eggs. Side note, who actually likes bologna sandwiches? I think that's the first on this show, and that's saying something. Food is what I live for. I'd eat every minute of the day if I could. They eat like eight meals a day. Wait a minute, he eats eight meals a day? Are they all that size? I was lonely, so I put up a page on a dating site when I was 31. And not too long after that, I met Amanda. I wasn't expecting to meet anybody, really. I was engaged before to someone who was also morbidly obese. He was over 700 pounds. He's just a wonderful, wonderful man. Well, that's not necessarily a meal, but eating ravioli right out of the can and then downing it with cake certainly is a decision one can make with their life. But I never felt like I've been able to be the boyfriend Amanda really deserves. The more my body breaks down, the harder I make it for her. And in case you're wondering if you only had one slice of cake, no, he didn't. It's a cross between my HK recipe and my Tetrazzini recipe. It's good. Enjoy. Time for meal number three of the day, and it looks to be about as healthy as the first two. I'm 38 now, and my life is pretty much this bad in eating. So I don't do anything or see anyone. I love Amanda with all my heart. Tommy's girlfriend says it's a mix of two recipes. We've got some pasta with sauce, looks like some meats in there too. Basically a whole bunch of stuff you shouldn't be eating at Tommy's weight. Once I'm dressed, food is what I need. It's what I want. And it's what I have to have. Usually, Chris is the one who makes it for me. After getting showered and dressed, Carrie cannot wait to finally get some food in her system. Food is like a best friend. It's a comfort, it's joy, it's almost euphoric. And when I'm eating, I don't hear anything else. I don't see anything else. Her husband, Chris, delivers breakfast right to Carrie's chair and just look at how much food there is. On the surface, it's just your typical breakfast foods, eggs, biscuits, and bacon. It's definitely not the type of meal you should eat every day, but it's nothing too bad to have on an occasion. However, what truly makes it stand out is the sheer quantity of the food. Just look at how high that's stacked. It's ridiculous that one person eats all that just for breakfast. I'm the receptionist at a doctor's office, and I'm only able to do that because I can sit most of the day. And when I get there, it's never too early for lunch. Despite her size, Carrie can still work and we get a glimpse of what her typical lunch looks like. Lunch motivates me a lot, but I'm getting to where soon I won't even be able to go to work. And yes, we will skip over the irony that she works at a doctor's office. I know my weight's out of control now and my body's getting to a breaking point. Okay, two boxes for one person, not really off to a great start. It is so hard for me to stop eating. If I did not have to keep a time clock, I would spend more time focused on food. We don't get a clear look at the actual food, but we can see that it's clearly not healthy. One of the boxes is loaded up with fries and what appears to be some type of wrap, a euro maybe, while the other one is what I'm guessing to be hash browns and sides. I prefer to pick up my own food at the grocery store because I'll get what I know what I like. Karina knows she needs help with her body. And one look at her daily diet gives you a good idea of how she got into this situation in the first place. My must-haves when anytime I go grocery shopping is juice, chips, 
my snack cakes, ice cream. The five food groups aren't exactly well represented in Karina's must-haves, are they? And this is every time they go to the supermarket? My family doesn't even ask me to go out to dinner anymore because they know it's too difficult for me to leave the house. And really, I can't wait for them to leave because it is the only way I can eat what I want without shame. Wait, if you felt shame while buying all that junk at the supermarket with your family, then when don't you get shame? I'll have two medium pizzas with pepperoni and sausage, one order of your cheese sticks, 24 honey chipotle wings, and the double chocolate chip brownie. Oh, yeah, that is a lot of food for just one person. Usually I hide my stash in the recliner. Chocolate is very irresistible for me. I want it all the time. Wait a minute, she keeps chocolate hidden inside of her couch? How does that not smell or melt? It has to be melted at least partially, right? God, that's disgusting. And that's the pizza. Hello. Hello. How are you? All right, got it. Thank you. That's more food than a typical family of four orders in one sitting. Sometimes I feel like I'm out of control, but each bite is so satisfying. It makes me feel warm and good inside, if only for a short while. And good lord, she eats it all. Boy, hearing it ordered is bad, but seeing it all laid out is something else. Look, we've seen a lot of truly disgusting eating habits on this show, but I think Karina's meal here might just take the cake. The next patient we have is Dottie, who starts the episode off with a double cheeseburger, fries, and 10 McNuggets. Altogether, this is about four 1400 calories, so it should keep her full for quite some time. However, later in the episode, it seems as if she's worked up a pretty huge appetite. I can't even tell you what most of this food is, but I'll try my best to identify it. There's definitely a huge helping of mashed potatoes completely smothered in gravy, as well as some mac and cheese. I'm not completely sure what else is on that plate, but I know it's a meat of some kind, could be some sort of patty. She then helped herself to a bowl of chocolate cake with ice cream. When I wake up, I try not to think about my life and how bad things are. But it's hard to do that with my body, which hurts all the time because it's breaking down. I don't feel like I'm even living anymore. Cindy says her life doesn't even feel like an actual life. And honestly, I kind of agree. If I didn't have my caretakers, I would have to probably be in a nursing home because I wouldn't be able to do anything and I don't have any other family that can help me. My relationship is good with my brothers, but I don't get to see them often. And then my sister, she passed away. It's difficult when you don't have anybody to find to help you. Cindy basically has nobody she can turn to besides paid support. And if that won't motivate her to start losing weight, I don't know what will. Okay, Cindy, I need you to tell me, are you gonna go or not? I guess I'm gonna go. Oh my God. <laughs> After quite a bit of negotiations and roadblocks, Cindy is finally on the road to go and see Dr. Now. Cindy, Dr. Now is here. Hi, Cindy. How are you today? Doing okay. So why you didn't comply with the diet and do better to get yourself in better shape? Do you realize that you're not gonna live too much longer like this? Yes. Being bedridden? Cindy's now down in Houston, and it's safe to say that her at-home visit isn't really going well. Let's check your weight and see where you are. In one month, you should be able to lose 70 pounds if you stick to your 1200 calorie diet. Wow, she hasn't even stepped on the scale yet, and Dr. Now is already giving her a 70 pound goal. You know that means she's in terrible shape, even by the show's standards. Okay. So you're at 614 pounds. So that is either more weight gain or hardly any loss at all. This is a very dangerous situation that you are in and you need to lose weight rapidly. Oh boy, that is not good. Had Cindy even been remotely following the diet, she would have been in the 500s by now, so she really hasn't done anything. It's been tough the last couple weeks. My grandma hasn't been feeling well and... She's getting older and I worry about her. And when I'm stressed, I eat. I feel bad going after Shay because we all know that it's never easy to see loved ones sick, especially since Shay's grandmother has been the driving force behind this desire to lose weight. I got five little button mushrooms stuffed with crab meat and I got my broils with no clarified butter. Still though, you really shouldn't be eating that. We can't see the meal itself, but what Shay describes tells us that he has slipped off the wagon since his original meeting with Dr. Now. I'm really devastated right now. My grandma suffered a heart attack and there was nothing anybody could do about it. It just can't believe she's gone. This is just two weeks after the previous clip and you can tell Shay's grandmother's death has hit him really hard. It's hard to picture going forward and her not being there. She was a big part of why I was trying to lose the weight. Now that she's gone, I just don't think that I can do it. This poor guy, it's hard enough to lose all that weight while battling food addiction, but doing it without your primary support? I'll be honest, I don't blame Shay at all for slipping up here. I'm just so lost right now. 
and food is my comfort. I want to eat so bad right now. I just want the pain to stop. I'm done trying. I'm done with all of it. The reception has buffet style food, which means you can grab however much of whatever you want, and you can see that Shay has no problem helping himself. It's hard to make out exactly what he's grabbing, but you can see his plate quite a bit fuller than everyone else's. By his own admission, he's using food to cope with what happened. Food is still tempting at times, but I've been resisting pretty well. The cravings are still there, but they aren't as bad. I didn't want to end this section on a low note, so I feel like I should tell you guys that Shay does eventually right the ship and loses quite a bit of weight. His grandmother would definitely be proud. Christina's mother goes to the drive through of a restaurant, and I can't tell exactly what the restaurant is, but they have something called a nibbler, and I think there's small chicken burgers. Christina's mother orders 16 of them, as well as some large fries and coleslaw. Now the argument we always give is that this food might not all be for Christina, but I'm sure a lot of it is, as we can see Christina helping herself to a lot of it. I'm pretty sure all the fries were for her as well, as we don't see anybody else even attempting to eat them. And once Alicia helps me get dressed, all I want to do is relax and eat. That's what my mission and focus goes to right at that moment when I can go out into the den and start my day with my first meal. And I get really excited about that. Getting ready to face the day isn't easy for someone of Kanae's size, but the thought of food makes it all worth it. When I have what I like, the pain of my body and all my sorrow are cast aside. Okay, corn dog for breakfast, that's definitely a new one. Having that to kick off your day is gross enough, but she's eating four of those bad boys and complimenting them with four cinnamon buns. I constantly have a craving. You know, it's this drive in me that I can't control, but I know it's taking over my life to the point of where I can barely get around. Oh God, she's putting syrup on it. I'm sorry, but this has to be some type of violation of the Geneva Convention. That is a crime against nature. I don't want to stop because I want that joy that food gives me. And I'm losing more of my abilities every single day. At some point in time, Kane got her hands on a sausage biscuit and now she's putting jelly on it. Look, eating a lot is one thing. We see it on the show all the time, but putting syrup on corn dogs and jelly on a sausage biscuit all before 10 a.m., geez, she belongs in prison. I just tried to escape my pain and guilt the only way I knew how to. And that got worse when I was 35 because I lost my mom on top of all of this. The family comes together for a chicken dinner and Kane shows that her breakfast this was a pretty accurate reflection of her eating habits. If your mother is living, there's no way for me to explain it to you. Just look at how much chicken she loads on her plate. Nobody needs that many wings. So when I lost her, it was the lowest point I'd been in my life. So I just ate to try to lose the pain. And even today, it still hurts. And I'm not gonna get over her death. Of course, the chicken is not all we got. I also spy some nacho chips with queso topped over the whole thing. And I'll be the first to admit this isn't as bad as her breakfast, but it's definitely not good for her health. Oh.